Hello, welcome to module four, the double entry concept. The system we have done up to now is really complicated. It gets complicated when we deal with a multiplicity of accounts. The system that's universally followed worldwide was set up in 1492 by Believe it or not, a priest. His name was Luca Pascioli. This is what we think he looks like. How does his system work? The way he set it up in 1492 was that all transactions are recorded in the form of T accounts. You put the account name on top. When a transaction is recorded on the left side of a T account, it's called debit. Debit simply means left side in the language of Luca Pascioli. The right side of a T account is called credit. Credit simply means right in the language of Luca Pascioli. So debit doesn't mean good or bad or plus or minus. It just means left. People do get confused about this. Similarly, credit doesn't mean plus, minus, or anything. It just means right. So don't get confused. Think of debit as left and credit as a right entry. This is the easy part. Now it becomes more confusing. These are the laws set up by Pascioli in 1492. For an asset, an increase is shown on the left and decrease on the right. For an expense, an increase is shown on the left and decrease on the right. For a liability, a decrease is shown on the left and an increase on the right. For revenue, a decrease is shown on the left, an increase on the right. For equity, the same rule applies, namely, a decrease is shown on the left and an increase on the right. You could ask the question, why? The answer is, we don't know. This is the way Pascioli set it up in 1492, and the miracle is the whole world follows it right up to today. There's been no change whatsoever. Now, I want you to do a short exercise. It won't take you more than five minutes. I'm going to show you six accounts. Here they are, <coughs> common stock, cash, accounts payable, salaries expense, advertising expense, sales revenue. What I want you to do is to print this out. Then based on the laws, I want you to think about it a couple of minutes and for each one, put plus or minus. I'm going to stop now. Stop this recording. Print this out. Do this exercise. And when you're done, restart. I'll give you the answers.
Are you done? Here are the answers. Common stock is a liability. So, have a look. Accounts payable is a liability. Decrease left, increase right. Go through each one. Did you get the answers right? To understand recording via T accounts, we're going to do a problem which we did before. Do you remember it? The double surprise travel agency. Please print that case out. We're going to repeat that problem using T accounts and the Pascioli technique. So stop this recording and print the case out. When you have the case in front of you, we'll get started. Are you ready? Do a little exercise for me initially. Look at the screen in front of you. I want you to open T accounts for cash, capital, rent expense, and office equipment. Then I want you to do the following. Open T accounts for advertising expense, accounts payable, office supplies, and revenue. Then open T accounts for drawings, salaries expense, bank loan, motor vehicle, and furniture. Now, print this page out. I want you, for each one, based on your knowledge, to put plus or minus. For example, Let's take the first one. Cash is an asset. What did Pascioli say about assets? Increase on the left, decrease on the right. So on the left, you'd have plus, and on the right, you'd have minus. Do it for each one of the T accounts you have in front of you. Stop this presentation. Do this exercise, and when you're done, we'll restart. Are you done? Here are the answers. OK, let's take the first group, cash, capital, rent expense, office equipment. Look at the plus minuses. It's coming now. Did you get it? Capital is a liability. So decrease left, increase right. So it's minus plus. Expense, what did Pascioli say? Increase left, decrease right. So it's plus minus. Office equipment is an asset. Go back to, to the basic law. What did Pascioli say? Increase left, decrease right. So it's plus, minus. Did you get those right? If you did, you're starting to really understand these laws. Here come the next set. Advertising expense, accounts payable, Office supplies revenue. Here come the signs. Did you get it? Good. Here come the next set. 
and here are the signs. Did you get it? The only thing I think which would confuse you was drawings. Just remember, for the purpose of T accounts, drawings is treated similar to an expense. So, increase left, decrease right. So, for drawings, it's always plus on the left, minus on the right. Now, let's take the double surprise travel agency and let's do all the transactions you did before. So I'm sure you're really familiar with them. Let's take all the transactions and enter them using the T account laws set up by Pascioli. Do you have the case in front of you? Are you ready? If so, let's get started. What was the first transaction? Do you remember? Polly Darden invested 10,000 cash to start the agency. So what two accounts are affected? Cash and capital. Here it comes. You put T accounts, cash, capital. If you remember, cash was plus minus. Capital is a liability. So decrease left, increase right. So it's minus plus. Cash increased 10,000. So under plus, you put 10,000. Capital increases. 10,000. So on, on the plus side of capital, which happens to be the right, you put 10,000. So put that in. Once you have done that, it's imperative that you write this down, explaining what's the left entry, which is debit, and what's the right entry, which is credit. This is done in a book called a journal. Hence, it's known as a journal entry. The journal entry for this transaction is now shown. Here it is. Cash was a left entry, 10,000. Capital was a right entry, 10,000. You have to explain in English what happened, so you would say 10,000 cash invested in the business. Are you getting the hang of it? So now you know how to enter T accounts, to put the signs, and to record the transactions, and then finally to make a journal entry. Let's do it for each of the transactions which we did before. What was transaction two? The travel agency paid 4,000 cash for April office rent. So do you remember cash? is minus, and you created an expense, which is rent expense, which is plus. So here it comes. The two accounts that are impacted are cash and rent expense. Cash, asset, plus minus. Rent expense, asset, plus minus. And cash had 10,000 balance from the prior transaction. So what do you do? Cash minus 4,000. So you put 4,000 on the right. Rent expense plus 4,000. So you put 4,000 
on the left looks like this. The journal entry explains this transaction. You have to state what was the left entry, which is rent expense, what was the right entry, which was cash. So it should look like this. Did you get it? It's not too bad once you get the hang of it. Let's do the next one. The company purchased office equipment for $2,500 cash. So what two accounts are impacted? It's cash and office equipment. Cash is decreased 2500 and you got equipment. So office equipment is plus 2005. Cash, office equipment, the two accounts which are impacted, do the T accounts. For cash, I put in the balances brought forward from prior transactions. And as I told you, cash is minus 2005, office equipment plus 2005. Here it comes. You have to record a journal entry which looks like this. I think you're getting the hang of it. Let's do transaction four. Incurred 13,000 of advertising cost in the Hickory Tribune on account. Keyword is on account. What does that mean? It means they didn't pay cash, so they owe money to the supplier. What do you call suppliers? Accounts payable. So what two accounts are impacted? Advertising expense and accounts payable, which in this case is the Tribune. Expense is plus minus. Accounts payable is a liability. Minus on the left, plus on the right. How are the transactions impacted? Advertising is plus 13,000 because you created an expense. And a liability is plus 13,000 because you owe money to the supplier. OK, did you get that? Now you have to record it as a journal entry saying, which is the left, which is advertising, which was the right entry, which is accounts payable. So it should look like this. I think you're getting the hang of this, aren't you? Let's do the next one. Transaction five. You paid $6,000 for office supplies. Supplies is an asset. So what two accounts are impacted? Cash and supplies. It should look like. If you look at cash, I brought the balances brought forward from prior transactions. Cash was minus six because the company paid money. Office supplies is plus six because their supplies increased by 6,000. So it should look like this.
Here's the journal entry to explain the transaction. <coughs> the next one is, I think, the most complicated. Let's break it down very slowly. They provided services for 59500 so they have revenue, 59005 They collected cash, 40000 So how much money do customers owe them? 19500 What do you call customers who owe you money? Accounts receivable. So the three accounts which are impacted are revenue, cash, accounts receivable. Revenue is minus plus, cash is an asset, plus minus, accounts receivable is an asset, plus minus. Revenue increased 59.5, so you put 59.5 on the right, Cash increased 40,000, so you put 40,000 on the left, and accounts receivable increased 19,500, so you put 19,500 on the left. Now you've got to do the journal entry, which looks like this. By now, have you noticed something about journal entries? Look at this very carefully. What's the total of the left? Cash 40, accounts receivable 19,005. So the total on the left is 59,500. What's the total on the right? The same number. This is the beauty of Pacioli's system. Whatever transactions you do, the left is always equal to the right. Let's do the next one. What was the next transaction? The owner withdrew 30000 for personal use. When an owner withdraws money for personal use, do you remember? What's the name of it? It's called, yes, drawings. So the two accounts that are impacted are cash and drawings. Looks like. If you look at cash, I brought the transactions from previously. It's brought forward. Now cash goes down 30000 and drawings, I told you, is plus minus. Drawings increase 30,000. So cash minus 30, drawings plus 30. And what's the journal entry? Looks like this. Have you got it? If so, let's go to the next one. You paid the Arkansas Tribune 10000 being part payment of the amount owed in transaction 4. So you're paying your accounts payable. Think about it. Which two accounts will be impacted? Well, cash because cash goes down, and accounts payable, am I correct? Look at These are the balances brought forward from prior transactions. Cash is minus 10,000. What is accounts payable? Is it plus or minus? 
if you pay them, the liability goes down because you owe them less money. So it should be minus 10,000 in accounts payable. So it should look like this. Cash minus 10,000. So 10,000 on the right. Accounts payable minus 10,000. So 10,000 on the left. So the transaction recording debit accounts payable 10,000, credit cash 10,000, and the journal entry will be like this. There you go. What's the next one? The company paid 5,000 cash for salary expense. So, what two accounts are impacted? Cash and salary expense. Here it cash you already had prior transactions, and salary expense up to now, nothing's happened. So, cash goes down 5,000, and you have an expense, so expense is plus 5,000. So, let me repeat, it'll be cash minus 5,000, salary expense plus 5,000. So, the entries are cash, credit 5,000, salary expense, debit 5,000. So the journal entry would look like this. What's the next one? Transaction 10. The company received 10,000 cash from customers previously billed. So what two accounts would be impacted? Cash, because you got money. And who paid you? The customer, that is, accounts receivable. So the two accounts that will be impacted are cash and accounts receivable. Did the company get money? Sure. They got $10,000. So cash would be plus 10000 Accounts receivable. They paid you 10000 so they don't owe you 19500 anymore. They owe you 19500 less 10000 so accounts receivable would be minus 10,000. Cash is plus 10,000. So the entry is cash debit 10,000. Accounts receivable credit 10,000. So the journal entry, which I think you're very comfortable with now, it looks like this. It's very simple. Journal entry, you just show what was a left entry, cash, and what's a right entry, accounts receivable. Let's look at the next one. The company gets a bank loan of $50,000. So cash increases $50,000. And what's the other account which is impacted? Bank loan. It's a liability because you owe money to the bank. So cash, which is an asset, is impacted. And bank loan, which is a liability, is impacted. Looks like this. You have cash and you have bank loan. Cash 
is debit 50,000. Am I correct? Bank loan credit 50,000. So the journal entry would be cash, debit, 50,000, bank loan, credit, 50,000. And the final transaction, the company purchased a, a motor vehicle from the local dealer, the Arkansas Car Mart, for 30,000 on account, which means liability is affected because now you owe money to the Arkansas car mart. What do you call liability? Accounts payable. So the two accounts which are impacted are motor vehicle, which is an asset, and accounts payable, which is a liability. Motor vehicle and accounts payable. So motor vehicle is plus 30,000 and a liability increases, so it's plus 30,000. So you debit motor vehicle 30,000 and you credit accounts payable 30,000. Now the journal entry is very straightforward, looks like this. Now, you did, you open T accounts, you put the signs, you recorded the transactions, you did the journal entries. I have a question for you. How do you know you got it right. Is there a probability you messed up? Could you have made a mistake? Sure. So how do you know you got everything down perfectly? You have to do what's called a trial balance. Before you do that, you have to close down each account. Let me give you an example. Let's do cash. In front of you, you have transactions on the left, plus, and you have transactions on the right, which is minus. So you add up the plus column, and you add up the minus column. Should look like this. The plus column comes to 110,000. The minus column comes to 57,500. So the company received $110,000. They paid 57,500. Which is heavier? Is it the left or the right? They got more money than they paid so the left is heavier by the difference, which is 52,500. So you'd say balance 52,500 and show it on the left. Now, what I want you to do is stop this recording and do this for every single T account. Close it and put the balance. Is the final balance on the left or the right? I'll give you a couple of minutes. Stop this exercise and do the plus minuses. Find out the balances for each T account. Stop now. When you're done, restart. Are you done? The first thing I want you to do 
is do what's called a trial balance, which looks like this. Debit means left, credit means right. List the names of all the T accounts. For example, the first was cash. What was the final balance? Was it left or right? Do you remember? It was 52,500 on the left. So for cash, you put 52,500 left. Do the same for office equipment, supplies, and go down. Stop this recording now and try this. Once you're done, restart. If you have done it correctly, the left and the right should balance. So stop now and restart when you've done the trial balance. Are you done? Does it look like this? Here comes the answer. The left totals 152,500. The right totals 152,500. So you did everything perfectly. Now from the trial balance, you do an income statement, statement of owner's equity, and balance sheet. And we already did that. But the most important is that the trial balance should balance. Once it balances, then you can proceed. We're done with this module. In this module, I wanted to show you how to record transactions using T accounts and how to prepare a trial balance. Thank you.